Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and worked with the flow combine function to actually boil down two different flows here from our state into one individual flow here of this UI product. If you miss it, I'll link a card in the top right. Feel free to check that out so you're all up to date. And in today's episode, we're actually going to handle the user's input here because last episode we just kind of faked it and we are modifying the store manually. So today we're going to actually listen for that click and modify it as we should so the application starts to feel uh, like it should. As we get started here, please consider subscribing if you are brand new. Uh, help me out by liking the video and let me know in the comments how I'm doing. Went ahead and just removed that five second delay that we had here where we updated the store afterwards because we're no longer going to need that. And instead, we're going to have to go into our UI product epoxy model and actually add in the click listener here for um, that, that favorite icon. So we're very easily going to say the favorite image view set on click listener. And at this point here, we have uh, one simple job to do, right? We, as the epoxy model, basically these cells here on screen, we should not be manipulating the store. We should not be uh, handling these click events as far as like what happens after it. And instead it's our job as this like low level view layer to just propagate that out to something else, something that owns this uh, epoxy model. And then they can manage what they need to do with that information. Um, so we're inside of the epoxy controller here, right, is where all of these UI product epoxy models are created. So this feels like a pretty good way or pretty good place to kind of update the store or handle that on click. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to define, you know what, let's define it as a function actually, why not? So I simply defined a function here on favorite icon clicked. It has one parameter to that function, the selected product ID. And what we can do here inside of our epoxy model is define a lambda with a similar structure. So here we have it, we have the on favorite icon clicked. It is of type lambda that accepts an integer and returns nothing here. So inside of our on click listener, we can just say on favorite icon clicked and we will pass in the UI product dot product dot ID because we want to notify this lambda here uh, of that ID that's been selected. So bouncing out to controller here, we can actually kind of update this uh, a little bit here with a certain syntax here. Uh, it might be easier to just copy it, but if we go ahead and put these two little uh, colons in front and then the name of a function here, it's basically like acting like a function pointer. And because this function here has the same exact signature as in accepts one parameter that's an integer and returns nothing, the code, the compiler is satisfied, everything works, and there is, um, you know, nothing to nothing else that we need to do. All right, so after a little bit of cleanup here, we're also going to update the constructor of this class. And what we're going to actually accept here is we're going to accept the main activity view model, the view model that corresponds to kind of this whole screen. Uh, we'll pass that in here. But the idea is that we could basically do a similar concept to what we did in here, right? Where we said store.update. We can do that from within the controller now because this function here is going to be invoked every single time the user clicks a particular icon, right? On a particular row. And we are given the ID that is relevant for that product that the user just favorited or unfavorited. So taking a look at our state here, we have the favorite product IDs. That is a set of integers. Now, notice this is also an immutable version, right? This is not a mutable set, this is just a set. So actually, the logic is going to be a little bit more intense than it normally needs to be, but um, it is a good idea to use or to look at your state as an immutable object, i.e. like this data class should not be something that you can just manipulate on the fly. That's why we use list, that's why we use set, not the mutable variants, because we want to preserve that immutability, preventing things from being changed, you know, erroneously and we'd rather submit a new application state to our store than modify the current one so that we can trigger all our flows and, and all that kind of good stuff. So let me go ahead and implement this function and then we'll talk about it real quick. Okay folks, I've updated the store here. Let's walk through this line by line so everyone understands what's going on. Um, the reason that we have to use or that's beneficial that we have the view model here is because we need the view model scope or we need some kind of coroutine scope. Um, because the update function on the store is actually suspending. So we can't just do this in place. That's part of the reason why we can't just do it inside of the epoxy model because we don't necessarily have a coroutine scope here that we 
feel safe using. Uh, it's not. It's also not the job of this class, but point being, we do need a coroutine scope, and the view model scope is one that works perfectly for this. So uh, we just launch off the coroutine here. I'm sure you've seen that before, just maybe not outside of the view model, but it is accessible. Then we just call viewmodel.store.update. We've renamed that variable that gets passed in here to be the current state. So then we snag the current favorited IDs, right? And that is the favorite product IDs on the current state. And then we have this little logic here to basically generate the new version of that. And so we first can say if the current favorited IDs contains the ID that was just selected, which would mean that there is this little heart completely filled in as opposed to just having the border. Then we filter out, we create a new set of favorite IDs with the one that is selected filtered out of it. This is how the user will be able to basically like negate their favoriting and remove an element from being favorited by selecting it again. And then in the else block here, that means that the current the, the, the selected product ID was not a part of the list or the set. So then we just can basically add these two sets together um, to make one larger set. And then very simply here at the end, we return at update, right? Returning into this uh, Lambda here, the current state dot copy, and then we update our favorite product IDs with the new favorite IDs. Not too bad actually, um, just broken down into one simple function and you know it doesn't really impact the uh, creation of these epoxy models too much, but I believe that's actually all that we need to do to make this um, feel like a natural application. So we removed from the view model here that delay as we saw in the beginning, so um, no nothing should be favorited when we start, and then as we start clicking them they should start favoriting. So we could see here that as we click, hopefully you can hear the mouse, that it just toggles between you know being favorited and unfavorited here. Uh, same idea with you know any of these. And if we favorite, let's say what is that the first five, we can kind of fling it, make sure we're um, you know make sure we're we're recycling properly. It looks like we are. It looks like there's nothing here. Maybe the second to last one as well. We still have one, two, three, four, five and nothing else but the second to last one here. So, yep, it does seem to be working. The only thing to note here is that we aren't really saving this information. So every time we rerun the application, we don't have those elements favorited again. It is a simple fix, but that's not the scope of this video. Instead, just wanted to manipulate the store here with the actual user interaction. This will be a pretty similar pattern here when we get around to adding things to the cart because it's accomplishing basically the same idea. We're just defining it a little bit differently. Instead of favorites, it's, you know, a set of things that are in the cart and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. A little shorter one here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it makes sense. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this, uh, if you need any further explanation. And uh, thank you for watching the video. As always, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.